Hello and welcome to 360 Thought on Trust TV. I am Imano Fashimi. That was a great one. It was a total whitewash of the Burkina Bays, uh, the young uh, girls all the way from Burkina Faso at the Moshuda Bila National Stadium against uh, the Flamingos of Nigeria for the 2024 FIFA Under-17 Women's World Cup second round uh, qualification series where we had to whitewash this uh, the young girls all the way from Burkina Faso the first leg in Bamako a week ago it was uh, a draw in Bamako Mali because uh, CAF didn't actually certify the stadium of Burkina Faso for that match that was the first leg and uh, coming back home coming back to Abuja we just uh, get we just have to wrap up the game according to Kut Bankolo Luwakere he said when they come back home they are going to get all the maximum point and they did that in a very 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 fashionable style winning six nil uh six nil in that particular game and i know that welcome you to the show proper and we'll still look at that we'll talk more about the guests about the under 17 and many more on the show and it's going to be a little bit different from what it used to be on 360 sports because we have a whole lot one hour a lot of topics lined up for you for your viewing pleasure this lovely monday money it was a sporting weekend indeed in nigeria and on the continent of africa and the world at large our athletes our athletes whatever we are we're doing so well and in riyadh the undisputed champion was known over the weekend all right let's uh, start up uh, from Accra, Ghana, let's begin with this uh, uh, news where 10 mark golden eaglets beat uh, their counterpart, the Nigeria Republic counterpart, in their second game, Group B, at the Wafu under 17 um, uh, game, as in tournament for uh, the young guys. It was a uh, 1 nil against 10 man uh, and 1 nil against uh, Nigeria Republic. Despite we were red carded in that game, Nigeria went ahead to um, defeat uh, the, the Benin Republic uh, in that particular game with a Niger Republic I beg your pardon uh, in that particular game it's a group B second game after a 1-1 one -one, after a 1-1 one -one draw um, after the goalless draw against Burkina Faso in their first game in group B opener then they had to just settle for uh, a win against uh, the golden against uh, their Niger uh, Republic counterpart and now we have four points and we are top of group B uh, in that particular game all right I have um, um, Abba Michael I have two guys about three of them on the show uh, this lovely morning we have Abba Michael in Jaws we have uh, Zoe Peter Frida Lane Abuja here and the other person who joined me in the studio pretty much uh, uh, later on but let's go straight to Plateau State let's uh, speak with Abba Michael uh, where uh, he is to join us on the show this morning. We'll look at uh, this particular game. That is the Golden Village game against the uh, Niger Republic. Michael, welcome to 360 Sports on Trust TV. For our under-17 team, second game, despite it, uh, they got uh, recorded in that game, uh, we were able to grind that win, and uh, we have four points in the group. Uh, probably we'll just be looking for a win in our last group game so that we can top the group and then avoid, uh, you know what, avoid the host that is uh, Ghana. B. Uh, the girls are looking quite uh, revamped. I saw the high spirits. Uh, the, I saw the Burkina Bays uh, at a point they were just wishing that the game could just come to an end. Uh, they were demoralized, devastated because our girls outmaneuvered them, outplayed them, outwitted them. They were outdone in every aspect of the game. I mean, when you look at the disappointment uh, following Arsenal's failure to win the Premier League, we're happy that uh, the Flamingos have given uh, some of us uh, some uh, green leaf. And we are very happy uh, for the victory. We hope that this will motivate the girls to use this momentum to take it to the last, very last game. I mean, the Flamingos are doing us proud. Uh, sometimes I wish the Super Eagles players would take a time, take their time and uh, watch these girls' clips. Look at their finishing. Very world-class, very fantastic. I mean, the, our senior men's national team struggle with finishing, struggle with linking up at uh, midfield and attack. But look at these girls doing it with sublime ease. But then uh, the, the team must maintain momentum. I hope uh, after firing six goals, they will not go into goal draft. So, but we want to wish them all the best and believe that they're very the next game they'll be able to uh, seal it emphatically as well. 
Okay, the next game. But however, Michael, precisely, let's look at the Golden Eaglets in Ghana. Ten man against uh, uh, Niger Republic. They got the maximum win, four points as it stands, after their goalless draw against Burkina Faso in their first game. Yes, I mean, Manu Garba, I mean, did a good job. Uh, when you have a draw in the first game, you need to find a way to psych your players, motivate them, and tell them that, hey, you can do this. Historically speaking, I mean, they have done so well. If you go back history lane, we've had several World Cup uh, victories. And so they shouldn't be left out. It's an opportunity to etch their name in history. If you go back in 1985, 19, uh, go back 2013, 2015, I mean, and recent years, Nigerians, uh, Golden Eaglets have been, uh, of course, at the cadet level, we have represented African continent, uh, made African continent proud. So I expect that same motivation to lead them to the next game. But we must say kudos to Coach uh, Garba. Okay, kudos to Coach Garba. Let's go to Zoe Fridalin uh, in the city of Abuja here. <laughs> he is also an Arsenal fan. But we'll still get to that in, on, on the course of the show. Zoe, uh, our, our guys did so well in Accra, uh, Ghana. Uh, it was a good game. Uh, this team was put together within a short period of time. And they were able to get uh, a win uh, despite uh, going down 10 men against the uh, Niger Republic. Four points in the bag. And the last game, we're hoping to also get the maximum three points so that we can just wrap up the group on um, seven points and then uh, probably top group B at the Wafu Under 17, uh, uh, Wafu Under 17 tournament in Accra, Ghana. Yes, um, I know I didn't really watch the match yesterday, but um, when I saw the result, I was very, very happy because you know, um, our Eaglet is one team that we Nigerians always like to watch, you understand? Um, just like uh, Mr. Midoku from Plateau said, you know, our Super Eagles needs to look at these boys because there's a way we play in our junior kidder. We played football very, very well. But when you come to the senior team, you see that we just keep missing chances and even trying to um, play passes, one or two passes, is very, very difficult. I love the way that the boys play, but I also want don't want them to rest on their oars because, yes, we are playing Togo Ness, who are the whipping boys in that group. But I also want them to just look at what the trophy that is ahead of them. Let them play with all might, and then at the end, we see that we become victorious at the Enwafu uh, Under 17 tournament. That is okay, we will come, become victorious at the Wafu, uh, Wafu Beyond Under 17 tournament going on in Accra, Ghana. Uh, that is also an avenue for them to pick the AFCON ticket. First, they have to get to the semi-final of that tournament, and then definitely they will pick one of the tickets uh, to play at the Under-17 African Cup of Nations, where they also have to slog it out to pick the ticket for the FIFA Under-17 World Cup. All right, uh, let's uh, leave uh, Accra, Ghana. You saw that video uh, where our ladies actually demolished... Uh, <laughs> their counterpart from Burkina Faso 6 nil at the MKW Abula National Stadium here in the city of Abuja. Uh, Michael, you spoke so much about these girls and how what it is. Now, let, let, let's uh, move forward. They will be playing Liberia, who eventually stunned Senegal after 3-1 first leg. And in the return leg, it was the reverse was the case against the Senegal ladies. And a lot of Nigerians, uh, football pundits, we're expecting that we're going to play against the Senegalese uh, uh, junior guests. But a turn, uh, let me say, power change hand, and now we'll be facing Liberia in the last round of qualification. Yes, I mean, it's an opportunity to uh, go back, uh, take a deep breath, look inwards, come out. Uh, it's not a time, there, there's no stones. Uh, a responsibility, a task as huge as this. Uh, get the best out of the athletes should be done. Uh, we leave no engagement. You don't have excuses. We want them at their best. Then we believe that uh, it will go well for the team. 
Okay, we believe that it will go well for the team. That game happened here in the city of Abuja. You just saw the clip of that game between Nigeria and Burkina Faso. All right, uh, moving ahead, still talking about, uh, before we go to the next story, congratulations to our 17 girls and under 17 boys in Ghana uh, for doing us uh, proud as a nation, as a country. 200 million plus people, in fact, hearts is out with these girls and these guys with what they are doing. Uh, uh, let's see how it goes at the end of the day. Against Liberia, we believe the Flamingos will get the job and uh, get that ticket to Dominican Republic 2024. The last edition in, in India, Nigerian came third uh, after beating Germany via penalties to leave, uh, the, to leave the bronze uh, at the FIFA under 17 Women's uh, World Cup uh, in India. All right, still talking about uh, women. Now let's quickly go to, straight to Yenegua as you speak. Some games are ongoing in the Nigerian Women's uh, uh, Super 6, that is Nigerian Women Football uh, League Super 6 uh, playoff. Uh, that is where the champions for the 2023-2024 league season would be crowned. The girls are doing so well. Edo Queen started the tournament on a high note by trashing Confluence Queens of Kogi 5-0. I don't know if we can lay our hands on that result. Probably we can just see it on the screen. Uh, and then today is March Day 2 where actions are lined up in March Day 2. In March Day 1, Baeza Queens, the host uh, state against River Sengia. It was a Southside derby. It ended on a 1-1 uh, affair and Heartland Queens also for the very first time in the women's super six actually did well. Uh, Michael, as you can see on the screen, these are the results for match day one. Confluence Queens uh, were trashed wood by Do Queens 5 1. Heartland Queens and uh, Nasser Amazons played a goalless draw. Also, Rivers Angels, uh, who are um, 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 champions, former champions of uh, the league against another former champion, Baeza Queens. It was a Southside derby. It ended 1-1. And today is match day two. If we, if we can get the fixtures for match day two, we will bring it uh, on the course of the show. But Michael, the Nigerian Women's Football League Super 6, fantastic game. Edo Queens in match day one against Confluence Queens. It was 5-1. And as it stands right now, although after a round of matches, as we speak, one game is ongoing as we speak right now. That game is still in the first half in March day two. But Edo Queens is at the top of the table with three points and plus four goals. Yes, I mean, uh, they have obviously stamped their authority. Uh, when you look at the scoreline, uh, it's, it sums up the, the task ahead of the team. It sums up the fact that the team is not here for a joke. The team is here to stamp our authority. The Edo Queens are the team to watch out for. They are already demolishing uh, all the teams, uh, the, at least the first team that they have encountered. The Confluence Queens will have to go and lick their wounds and see if they can uh, get next game but as far as Edo Queens is concerned they have succeeded in shooting themselves to the top as the favorite uh, for uh, this Super 6 and quick but they are looking already like champions elect because uh, they possess so much firepower that I don't think any of the uh, Amazons or the Heartlands or the, Re or the Angels uh, would have answers to if they can maintain momentum if the coach can keep uh, they may be able to floor every team that comes their way but right now they are obviously the team to beat and i'm sure they've sent quivers and Okay, they've sent Quivers uh, assistance right now. Edo Queens is doing so well. Um, uh, uh, Zoe, uh, if you look at these games uh, going on in Yenegua, this, uh, this is Nigerian Women's Football League. Uh, what do you think uh, the league, will, the organizers need to do? Because uh, assistance right now, uh, one of the things is that, that uh, the league needs uh, publicity. What other thing do you think we can do to bring our women's league, at least to showcase them to the eyes of the world, just like what we see in England, the women's uh, soccer league, where Chelsea actually, Chelsea are champions of the women's soccer league in England, but we're not good there. But the thing is, how can we also make our women's league viable in the country? Um, yes, um, though this um, league standing or this um, six, this standard they use them playing this um, women's league, I don't like the way or the pattern 
that it is. You know, and Nigeria is the giant of Africa. I think we need to do something more for our women's football because if you look at our national team, you see that the women's um, um, side is actually playing better. They are playing better. So um, in terms of advertisement on our national televisions, like for example, um, yesterday that the game was played, if you look at our um, television station, AIT and, and NTA, they did not show this ball. So we need to work on our advertisement. And then also there must be motivation. Because if um, I remember was it last two years or so, there was this complaint about reverse engines complaining that they have not been paid for like two months. And these are people that are working and who are breadwinners of their families. So there must be motivation and also the advertisement angle of the league should be what improved on. Let us meet multinational companies. Let us meet people that are ready to invest into this league. Because I think this um, CIS standard pattern, or what is it called, this table pattern, whereby I will play myself and then you play yourself, that is not like proper league. <laughs> okay. So let us make it a proper league. Bring advertisement into the game. And then you see that um, Nigerian um, national women's league will begin to work go even across the borders of Nigeria, down okay, to the various African countries and the uh, and of the large. world. All right, uh, Michael, um, I don't know, uh, from your own point of view, uh, the Super 6, though, for the very first time this season, we have this game being streamed online. If you actually want to watch uh, um, the Women's uh, League, you have to go online and watch some of those games. And even the Super 6 is being streamed online. Uh, but uh, is that enough for the Women's League? Because at the national level, our women has done us proud than the men both on field and off field in athletics name me what have you i think the women are taking the shine and i, I don't know why at least uh, this league would should be something that everybody because a lot of persons as we speak if not that will bring it from 360 sports on trust tv because sure you are you are sure to get all the updates when it comes to nigerian sporting story um how many media houses are also talking about the women's uh, Super Six going on in Yenegua, that is at the Sam Sinsia Stadium. So uh, what can we, we actually need a lot to be done? From your own point of view, I don't know if you have uh, a contrary view to what uh, uh, Zoe just said. No, I don't have a contrary view. I mean, I listened to two or three radios and nobody mentioned it. Like you said, no station mentioned it. It's just 360 sports. No wonder they call it 360 sports because it revolves around uh, the, the length and breadth of uh, the nation and Africa at large. And uh, that's why you get first-hand information of all the hidden news, hidden information about uh, our sports. But let's be honest. I mean, if you look across generally, even in the NBA, for instance, uh, the women's game, a lady, uh, the best female basketballer, perhaps earns maybe 500,000 a year, while the best male basketballer earns about 50 million a year. And then, of course, the same thing applies to the club level. They have won the league, but if you look at uh, their take home price, is uh, nothing compared to that of the men. Generally, uh, as far as sports is concerned, if it's not athletics, where they are evenly matched, or where they are given equal opportunities, where we watch the male and female uh, simultaneously at the same time, in the same tournament. When it comes to all these uh, ball games, there is always a bias. Our fans are biased uh, towards watching the male. And if you look at it, the female game, uh, the ability is gaining momentum. Uh, let us not give up. I believe that with time, the women's league will get more coverage. At least in the English Premier League, we can watch their matches live now, unlike before. So there is hope, there is light at the end of the tunnel that these girls will be given visibility. But I urge our broadcast stations to please highlight the summaries of the Nigerian Women Football League. Let it not only be the NPFL. I mean, we want to see the Women League also being discussed on uh, other stations, other sister stations.
Okay, definitely we normally do that here. We give you some highlights of the Women's uh, Football League and you are sure you'll get the highlights of those games, Mark the 1 and Mark the 2 uh, when they are ready. You'll get it on 360 Sports uh, as we speak. All right, let's uh, start uh, talking about our uh, football. Let's go over to the men's uh, uh, football right now. That is Nigerian Premier Football League. Rivers United at last back on winning ways after they defeated the uh, niger tornadoes in their last rescheduled game three to it and then a five goal thriller at the adokia masimaka stadium in portrakot rivers united was able to hold their own despite everything that niger tornadoes threw at the team uh, it was three to it ended and as we speak um good one for rivers united despite all their um wobbles their um, struggles we know that stanley neguma has left that team uh, michael I think it's a good news for uh, the pride of uh, Rivers. Yes, definitely it is. Uh, the team obviously has a lot of work to do in the off-season. Uh, Stanley Eguma is gone. They have to prepare for life after Stanley Eguma. Uh, the team definitely is not finishing where they, pl they plan to finish. Uh, but that is football. That is sports. Uh, sometimes you don't have it your way. They should take a look in hindsight and be happy that at least they've made their mark. The Eguma led team, I think they won in 2021 and perhaps in 2016, they've had a run in the Champions League for consecutive seasons. And so it's not doom and gloom. Uh, they should just uh, allow the team uh, to go on a restart or a refresh uh, so that uh, they can go on a new slate, uh, shop for uh, perhaps a very good coach, uh, Gaffa, that will galvanize the team to victory. Uh, perhaps in the next season, but right now, definitely it has not reached them the best, knowing that uh, there's uh, still light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, kudos to the victory against Niger. Uh, kudos to the victory against uh, Niger Tornadoes. All right, uh, uh, let's uh, before we go over to the next story, let's just quickly take uh, the highlight of the, uh, the Flamingos against Burkina Faso. Let's just take a, a bit of that highlight and we'll be right back and we'll go straight to athletics where Toby Amundsen is doing so very well and definitely like athletes. Um, it's, it's a good news for all of our athletes in the world, in Nigeria and outside the country, outside the shores of the country, because they are doing well and preparing for the Paris Olympic Games. All right, let's quickly go over the highlights. And when we come back, we'll just change gears uh, and go straight to athletics. As you get to the of the ball, but as you say, just in down at 54, the And well put it out. Chidamoni tries to get a big chance, can she chase through? She goes back to Agodiba, that's a big chance, she beats her, and that's a big chance, 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 and that's a big
And finally, the referee has called it hot in this encounter. They have thrown the whistle for half time in this game. Okay guys, go back to the pitch of play and return to the throw-in for Nigeria. A quick throw, can I drag that one? It's not, can a shot come in there? A good shot! He hit the ball and it is three goals! Good ball! This big goal number four from Nigeria. So seven minutes gone. Mojut can hit the ball with a powerful left foot, a wonderful left foot. And of course, don't forget it, no order. And of course, uh, a shot by Arafalabi. Opposition has been the problem for Mojut this evening. But a good pass. She can't go find no order. Yes, welcome back from that particular break that video where our flamingos demolished whitewash uh burkina faso in the second round of the fifa under 17 women world cup uh, qualifiers they have Ab abba michael and peter zoe peter on the show and also i've got uh, another person in the studio uh, the tallest man uh, his name is sonny canto that is uh, joining us on 360 sports uh, on trust tv uh, sonny canto welcome to 360 sports it's been a wonderful one having you on the show this uh, morning well uh, thank you so much for having me. It's always a pleasure and uh, looking forward to the fact that uh, the clock is ticking. The Olympic is around the corner. We are excited. Okay, we are excited. All right, talking about the Olympics, let's go straight to athletics. Like I said, when we come back, we will be changing gear. Now, over the weekend also, Toby Amundsen coming second behind Kendra Harrison in the Atlanta City Games uh, right there in the United States uh, of America. Uh, but the thing is, after the other previous weekend where she actually won the Jamaica Invitation at 12.40 to set uh, the fastest uh, world record this uh, year and uh, leading to the Olympics, uh, the second race in space of uh, a week, at the Atlanta City Games, uh, Toby Amundsen came second uh, behind uh, Kendra Harrison, who actually won that race in the women's uh, 100 meters hurdle. Michael, well, uh, she, she came second in this uh, particular race. Uh, despite that, she gave, she gave her best, she gave everything she can. Uh, she did everything she can on that track, on the blue track at uh, the Atlanta City Games. But as it stands, uh, um, she came second to Kendra Harrison, that is Toby uh, Muson. Yeah, I mean, we know Toby Amusan uh, for her finish. When you talk about top end speed, uh, no hotline in the world beats Toby Amusan's top end speed. Uh, that you can testify by her world record in 12.12 seconds. Uh, definitely, if you watch the Jamaican Invitational, you would see that she had a very poor takeoff. 
But then she was able to pick it from the fifth hurdle, and then she came clamping and then closed down uh, the gap. And of course, her fine finish, like Noah Lyles, I saw her eclipse and uh, drawn the fastest time ever on a Jamaican soil. I mean, in the land of running, you, a, a foreigner comes uh, to drop the fastest time. And uh, she had the same sluggard stats at the Atlanta Games. The difference being that uh, when she got to the fifth hurdle, where she is known uh, to pick up the speed when others are faltering, but then she couldn't maintain her momentum. Kendra Harrison was flying from her, uh, from the wings, and uh, she didn't have the answer to the onslaught of Kendra Harrison, uh, she, and she was peeped to the line. Uh, but then I think she dro she dropped a twelve seven two. Yeah. Uh, Toby Amusan was definitely not the Toby Amusan she was a week earlier. But when the Olympics come, we want the best version of Toby Amusan. We want the Oregon Eugene 2022 version of Amusan that right from the start, she needs to work on her stats. I think her takeoff has been poor in the last two races. Her execution has been good, especially in Jamaica and then perhaps in the indoor earlier in the season. But she needs to watch her takeoff. As her finishes as well so that she can go back to her best three consecutive diamond leagues their victory back to back commonwealth i mean consecutive african games and of course world champion world record holder she needs to cement herself as the goat of her 100 meters hurdles that she will do if she keeps her condition incorrect for the paris olympics that is just by the corner Yes, if she keeps a condition for the Paris Olympics that is at the corner. Toby Amazon, uh, I don't know, really know. She has um, this, uh, her starting is not really the best of it right now. But if you look at it of, from all the races she has run so far in 2024, I think she has been brilliant in all of the races. Of course, uh, absolutely agree to that. Looking forward to the fact that uh, she has come into limelight and uh, she has. Uh, perhaps uh, have uh, a lot of pressure coming up, looking at the fact that uh, the Olympic is also around the corner. Everyone really wants to really see how they can upset or uh, overturn a record, but I'm super excited for the Athletic Federation of Nigeria under the leadership of Chief Tono Kobo, the technical uh, director Samuel Nikeko, the secretary general and the board members these guys are really doing all they could or all they can uh, ahead of the olympics and make sure these athletes are giving the best account of themselves they just returned back from the world relay after outstanding performance and of course uh, we noticed how they went to hungary last year in the, the world uh, championship they did their best uh, from the World Relay, they came to all African Games in Ghana, but, uh, uh, and I they went to Bahamas or uh, uh, World Relay and returned. Now they are targeting the podium finish in the Olympics. For Toby Amuson, what are her chances at the Olympics? Well, uh, I want to rate her like uh, 90 over 100 because at the moment, despite uh, several pressures, and of course uh, looking at the fact that she has a uh, uh, taste victory before in the world stage, she still have what it takes to finish. Well, I, I think she needs to just uh, preview what she has uh, been going through lately and uh, make sure she walk uh, 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 cross her high and dot her T's, make sure she work tactically on uh, a starting point. I, I think most times it's the finishing point that matters, but the starting point also can't. Uh, for Toby Amosa, she has really made Nigerians proud. She has really uh, made uh, uh, the women uh, uh, gender uh, uh, recognized globally, and she has done so well for herself. Okay. I was glad she was able to overcome the anti-doping challenge uh, uh, months ago, and now she's also doing what she knows how to do best. Uh, looking forward to the fact that there are many competitors out there she will want to give in her best. We look forward to see her best in the Olympics, of course. Okay, we look forward to see her best at the Olympics uh, because as a stand, we just we are just counting days to the Paris 2024 Olympic Games. All right, uh, we are still talking about athletics. Let's quickly just have a glimpse of this video. And when we come back, we'll be talking about one athlete who is looking uh, to do well when it comes to Paris 2024 Olympic Games. Favor of Philly, one athlete that is uh, looking forward to 
uh, have super, in fact, super exciting to be at the, to qualify for the Paris 2024 Olympic Games, and then um, coming maybe going to that uh, particular games. Her performances, she's looking forward to that. But let's have that video quickly before Sonny Kanto and Abba Michael with Peter will react to Fever Philly looking forward to do well at the Paris Games. Wonderful run, and indeed, Favor Offaly finishing like a rock record for Candice Hill over 150. Favor Offaly 16.30. Yes, uh, I want our focus story that was Favor Philly who uh, we'll be talking about right now, uh, where she says she's going, she want to do, as in, she's eyeing a better outing at the Paris 2024 Olympic Games. It's expected of every athlete to go to the Olympic Games and of course have a, a podium finish. We have seen remarkable moments of the days of the Mary Oyale and of course uh, Fadlila Ogu, Koraya and Co. And uh, being the fact that the Fasuba and all these guys have really made us proud. We, we still look forward to those historical moments. We still look forward to those euphoria moments to see how people like Favor Ophili will put in our best and get a podium finish. Luckily for her, she's uh, um, doing well currently and of course uh, she's having age on her side and I believe Nigerians will be very patriotic to support her. Okay, uh, Michael, let, let's go to, straight to Plateau State. Uh, all, in the course of the week, also at the Atlanta City Games, we saw that highlight where she was second to uh, Candice. Uh, both of them finished at the same time, but uh, Candice won that race with, uh, uh, I think, six thousands of a second. That was why Candice actually won that race. But uh, looking at favor of Philly, 200 meters, she has broken the record uh, in Nigeria, and she also set her own. Uh, this season, she has been at her best. And definitely 200 meter is going to be a very hot race at the paris olympic games and for favor philly the likes of sherika jackson and co <laughs> should watch out for this nigerian speed star yes as a matter of fact as we speak on current form favor of philly if she squats with sherika jackson right now she will beat Sherika Jackson. I can give you, I can guarantee you that, take that to the bank. Favor Ophili is arguably the best 200 meters sprinter Nigeria has ever had. And the good thing is that she's just 23 years old or so. She just graduated from LSU, Louisiana State University. And let me shock you further. She has the second fastest 300 meters ever in 35.9 seconds. And then she has the fastest 150 meters time ever in 16.30 seconds. I mean, if you look at the 200 meters, her specialty outdoor, she has 22.11. And then the, uh, sorry, yes. And then in an indoor 21.95 or, or, or so. Favor of Philly is the only Nigerian so far in the history of uh, sprints Nigerian woman to run under 22 seconds in the 200 meters. She had ups and downs last year and the last two years, but I believe if Favor of Philly is at her best, she is definitely going to finish at least at worst in the top four. I know Sherika Jackson will be ready for the Olympics, of course. I know that Gabby Thomas will be ready for the Olympics. And let's not forget that uh, Sydney McClucking the 400 meters hurdles world female champion is the best 200 meters in the world right now as we speak so but then to uh, favor of philly is our girl and we believe that with the improvement we are seeing in her races execution week in week out i believe that uh, she should be dropping the 21 lows when the olympics come and okay. for the first time since mary onyali we will see a Nigerian finish on the podium. Yes, a Nigerian finish in the podium. All right, we are going to leave athletics. Let's go straight to England. The big one happened uh, yesterday. Uh, Zoe, you are an Anasna fan. Unfortunately, 
Arsenal couldn't win the league. Uh, well, l l let me let me let me uh, uh, talk to you about this. I don't know how you felt after three one against West Ham United, another London team who all Arsenal were expecting uh, to do them a favour by beating Manchester City at Etihad, but uh, the reverse was the case. It was three one against West Ham United, and for Manchester City, they lifted the pre EPL, the Premier League title fourth consecutive time that is four times in a row one two three four so uh what was your take about this that uh, arsenal couldn't uh, just wrestle this title away from pep guardiola and his uh, soldiers um well it was an emotional game for me yesterday uh, um, though i was hoping that um, west ham will actually do us a favor by either drawing or winning man city but we all know what um, Pep Guardiola and his team can do when it comes to a few minutes to the end of a season. They always have this spark. And that's one thing I give to that man and his team. But um, I want to say something to all Arsenal fans. Let's just keep the hope high. Though I'm not too convinced with what Ateta has done for us this season, because um, um, in our various matches, such as like the EPL and I mean the FA Cup and the Community, um, the Capital One Cup, where we are supposed to do better, we are just pretending there. And then we put all our Arsenal in the EPL for us to actually win it. And then at the end of the day, we could not win. Okay, at the so end of the day, you I, could not win. And congratulations yeah. to. Uh, uh, the champions in England, that is uh, uh, Manchester City. I will not allow Michael to react, neither Sonny Kanto, because I know, Michael, you're also an Arsenal fan. I know it's painful for that loss. All right, let's go straight to the... <laughs> let's go straight to the German Bundesliga because we're out of time, where Victor Boniface and Bayer Leverkusen have actually made history. Uh, they've gone the season, the whole of the season, without a loss. 34 games. Let's have the table quickly. Let's just look at the German Bundesliga table. They played 34 games of, out of 34 games they they won 28 uh, michael please just talk about uh, victor boniface and bayer leverkusen setting a league record they became the first team in the german bundesliga to win the title without losing a game six draws out of 34 and 28 wins Yes, I mean, it's a fairy tale experience for uh, Bayer Leverkusen. Uh, kudos to Xavi Alonso. It's like a Cinderella story. It's, some, it's more imagined than reality. Uh, they've had an unbelievable season. I'm happy for Victor Boniface. I'm rooting for him also for the Europa League finals. I just wish we had him for the AFCON. I believe Nigeria would have done better, especially when Osimen was jet lagged and fatigued. But then this is a, a, a record breaking season, and I want to wish uh, Bayer Leverkusen all the very best. Uh, let them close the season by winning the Europa League so that they can etch their name in history, uh, doing things that uh, football has never seen. I've watched football for more than 30 years. I mean, I'm not sure if I've seen in my lifetime anything like this. And uh, so okay. big kudos to uh, our own Nigerians uh, that are actually on the team. Okay. Kudos to Nathan Teller and Victor Boniface in the uh, German Bundesliga winning the title without losing a game. Six draws for them and then 21 out of 34 games. All right, that is where we'll be leaving it on the show. Three City Sports and congratulations to Victor Boniface. Congratulations to the Golden Eaglets and the Flamingos for doing us proud uh, here in Nigeria. Six against Burkina Faso and uh, a 10-man Golden Eaglets beating the J Republic. All right, Sonny Kanto, also thanks to you for coming on the show uh, this is where we'll be leaving it thank you so much for having me all right that is it on the program 360 sports uh, i am emmanuel fashimi say thanks for watching <laughs>